Yeah. That's the look right there, the Jumbotron high above Times Square. Pretty baby Brook Shields. That documentary, the first project from the company my wife, Allie Wellworth, and I set up called Bed by Aid. And here is the star and subject of the documentary, Brook Shields. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we had the premiere the other night here in New York. It starts streaming on Hulu April 3rd. It feels like the first conversations we had are so long ago at this point, but you talked about this after the premiere the other night. Reflect on what this whole experience has been like to see your life put out like that. It has been so emotional and you know there's a lot of, there's so many feelings and so many emotions and, and to look at my body of work in its entirety, it was, it was so sort of self-affirming. Mm. I didn't expect to, to feel that. Mm. And then to see that little girl and see how strong she was even at that age, yeah. you know? And I'm proud. What, I, what fascinates me is the change in my voice. Mm. You yeah. can hear, it just, it's as if more and more and more you feel me speaking from you a know, place. You know, you say the strength of that little girl's voice. It is one of the most startling things people will see in this documentary is watching you get interviewed at the age of 8, 10, 12, 16 in ways that are kind of unimaginable today. And sh shocking beyond belief that right. the, the very thing that they were accusing the films or whatever I was doing of, they were doing actually right, right there, <laughs> totally to you, you know, exactly. To me. Totally. And and you know just this idea that you would put all the onus on just me, um, but you know what it did, and I've talked to you about this. I I lost a lot of respect yeah. for the industry, you mm -hmm. know, and for the press and mm -hmm. for news, and it was because I thought that, that you keep taking reducing these amazing acting jobs or think pieces of film or reducing them to really the lowest common denominator right. and one thing you don't look at the entirety of it and how narrow is that or the accomplishment you know that, that the uh, or the talent that you, you know I right mean, it was always I was never told I was good and talented I was told I was beautiful or I was told I was you know and so that those are the kind of things that you when you see it all together and I've just always compartmentalized mm. so to see it all to get put you know together I was just took my breath away many times and well you have been approached to do this before I don't know how many times many <laughs> what made you decide now is the time Allie and George I mm. mean you know I I at least one of my best best friends and I trust her and and I knew that it would be handled in a way that was different and interesting this was their their company I was so proud and happy for them that this company had gotten started first and project fed too. by eight and their first project trusting me with it and then the real clincher was Lana Wilson the director incredible. I mean, she, she just I mean that film could have gone a million different ways and what she did with it, I think, is truly beautiful. Well, can we just like get to the dirt now and hear what was it like working with George? <laughs> <laughs> He's really tough. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I love it. Well, what was so amazing to me is because we would, you know, have dinner and we would, you know, talk about things. Was just the the, the things in the film that affected you. What were such were so sort of personal to me because they yeah. meant something and you know, it just meant that I was being loved and seen. And I, I would tell her, you know, because we probably saw the film through various cuts two, three dozen times. Sure. Every single time I saw it watching it in front of a computer on a Saturday morning, there's a scene Brooke tells about her time at college when one of her professors comes and says, you know, trust your own voice. And it got me every Every, every single every time. time. It is so emotional. You talk about losing respect in the industry. Do you think that industry, culture, society has evolved? Has have things gotten better? I feel like we're in a moment where we're reframing, you know, sort of the views of the agency of young women. I'm not so sure how far we've come. I think we've started sort of speaking more loudly about it. Mm. Um, what I think has changed the most in, in the industry is that there are many more rules put in place to protect young performers. So I see it much more in the film industry. Um, but this image, the imaging, you know, the argument, my kids have it, is that they're controlling their image. But 
they're, they're, they don't realize that then it is forever everybody else's right. property. And so are you really controlling your image? And the false, the, the falsehood of all of it, the filters and the, the screens. The way those the algorithms yeah. work and send you things back that they think you're going to want to watch. Exactly. So I think that it's, it's a, a relinquishing of this control that I think they think they have. You know? One part of the doc is a great conversation, dinner conversation you have with your two teenage girls and your husband, Chris. We want to show a little bit of it right here. Would you have let us at the age of 11? No. Yeah. yeah. So why, why? Am I a hypocrite? Like, no. You weren't just... a mom then. Yeah, you, <laughs> you weren't, weren't, you the weren't mom. a mom. You weren't the, uh, you were looking to your mom and, For... and she had all the answers. And so you weren't going to question that. Right. <clears throat> you also weren't the only one, you know? Like, it was, you weren't the only underage, like, female being over-sexualized in this film industry during this time. What a revealing moment right there. And I think Chris said it, you weren't a mom then. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge piece of the documentary is, you know, motherhood and where are those boundaries and what is acceptable and what is right and what, and you know, you, you, what was so interesting about that moment, I said yes so quickly to Rowan. And in that split second, I was, it was so clear to me that I no longer needed to defend my mother hmm. because I had become the mother yeah. and cho I chose wow. my kids mm. and I, I mean because I, I, I said it so quickly and you know instantly had I been younger and said it I would have felt like I'd betrayed her right. you know it and was such a powerful scene your daughters are so impressive un un unprovoked I mean it wasn't like we they were schooled as to what to say this came out of nowhere they a testament to your parenting. Mm -hmm. oh. you know? <laughs> and they you. are they happy that you did it uh, now that it's all done? The older one was was very happy, and she said, "This is really necessary. It needs to be seen." My younger daughter really struggled with it. Um, she, you know, the kids knowing that their parents had a life before them is very sort of uncomfortable and shocking. You yeah. know, they, right. we didn't actually exist before they yeah. were born, um, and also she couldn't handle me being hurt in any way mm. and you know she said to me no matter what you say to me mom it's not going to make me feel better oh, wow. and I will not see it again and you know she's 16 so she just it's and then I think of that little girl saying she's my mama you know? <laughs> right. and yeah. that's that's they they are there you yes. know so well, thank you for sharing the story, and thank you for being so generous thank in the you. way you did it. Pretty Baby Brooke Shields premieres Monday on Hulu. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.